All right, for the remaining two parts of this lecture, let's now talk about the softmax regression learning rule. With that, I mean computing the gradient of the loss with respect to the weights and the bias unit so that we can then use gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent to yeah, train a softmax regression classifier. And once we cover the yeah, big picture of how that works, we will then yeah, implement that in code and see how it works actually. So the concept is actually the same as with Adeline and the logistic regression classifier that we talked about before, because yeah, also softmax regression is still a single layer neural network. So what we have is, or what we want first, what we want is um, the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weight wi, or essentially also we can talk about the gradient of the loss with respect to the weight vector, that's what we ultimately want, but here it's just easier to yeah, write it as a partial derivative. And then yeah, we will also or want to compute the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the bias unit. So when we have these partial derivatives, we can then use stochastic gradient descent to update the weights. And it's the same as we've done it with um, Adeline, linear regression and logistic regression. So the same setup here, like I said, applies. We can use the chain rule to yeah, uh, decompose this derivative into individual terms. So we can compute the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the activation, and then the partial derivative of the activation with respect to the net input, and then the partial derivative of the net input with respect to weight wi. The only difference here is um, compared to the regular logistic regression is that we now have the softmax um, activation. And just for reference in Adeline, we had an identity function as activation. And in the regular logistic regression, what we had was the sigmoid, or let's say the logistic sigmoid as activation. So the only uh, thing that really changes is that we have now a different activation function in softmax compared to what we've done before. And then yeah, also equivalently, we can compute the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the bias. It's the same concept really. So here's a sketch of the computation graph of softmax regression. I always personally find it yeah, easy to think of a model if I look at the computation graph. I mean, if you have a very large, big model, of course you don't want to write all the, uh, down all the units, but a simplified version of the model actually I find uh, usually helps in practice. So here, um, notice that this is not a multi-layer neural network yet. We will talk about the multi-layer neural network in the next lecture. So it's still one layer and there is no hidden layer. It may look like it because what I did is I was drawing the net inputs as an intermediate step. Usually when you later look at yeah, drawings of multi-layer neural networks, the net input and the activation function are combined into one function or one node actually. So in that way I was just writing those explicitly. If I wanted to yeah, illustrate a multi-layer neural network, for example, a multi-layer perceptron with one hidden layer, then I would have to add another, let's say, Z2 and A2 in between, so before the uh, loss, basically, there would be another layer. So, yeah. So what I wanted to say is here we still only have one weight layer. So this is this one here. There's no additional weight layer. In the multi-layer case, we will talk about that in the next lecture, we will have another weight layer. So, and here this would be where we apply the softmax activation, but notice that we don't have any weights here. I was just drawing how it conceptually works. So remember from the softmax activation, what happens is that each activation that comes out of it depends on all inputs, all net uh, inputs, because we have this normalization going on in softmax. So yeah, then we can apply actually the multivariable chain rule, or we have to apply the multivariable chain rule, because um, 
Let's consider the case where we want to compute the partial derivative of the weight w12, this one here that I highlighted. So if you look at it, so what's um, involved here is x2. This one goes into z1. z1 goes into a1 via the softmax. Um, and then it goes to the loss, but you can also see it's connected to A2 because it's also involved in yeah, computing all the terms in the softmax. So there are multiple things now, all the blue ones that I circled, that are involved in the uh, partial derivative of the loss with respect to W12. All right, so for that, because there are now two parts, this A1 and this A2, we have to use the multivariable chain rule. So for this upper part here, that's what I have here on the left-hand side, and for this uh, lower part, this is what I have here on the right-hand side. Um, it's essentially the same concept. We compute the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weight. For the left part, it's we can decompose it into the partial derivative of the loss with respect to a1, a1 with respect to z1, and z1 with respect to w12. On the right-hand side, the only difference is here that instead of a1, I have a2 now, right? Because that's what it's this path. So on the right-hand side, I'm, we are looking really at this path, and on the left-hand side, we look at this path. All right, so the derivatives, I was just writing them out here. I can actually walk you through this. I yeah, sketched that out in the next couple of slides. It actually took some time to yeah, type this in LaTeX, but uh, then we will have it for reference. So here, um, here we have these three terms. The partial derivative of the loss with respect to the activation. Notice it's essentially the same, except that uh, we have here um, index one and here index two. And here, this is the partial derivative of the softmax function with respect to the net input z1. And this is the partial derivative of the softmax function with respect to, yeah, also z1, but now we have the unit a2 here and here the unit a1. Right, so maybe uh, let's go through this in the next couple of slides. I've sketched this out. Yeah, let's start from the left-hand side. So what we have is the partial derivative of the loss with respect to A1. So the loss, if you recall, that's the multi-category cross entropy. Here for just one training example, so I'm omitting the outer sum. So we are just looking at the sum over the class labels, class labels um, j equals one to h. And yeah, uh, this is just the multi-category cross entropy loss. And notice now, um, that, yeah, there's a sum over the labels, the true labels yj and aj. And if I just look at the partial derivative of um, a or with respect to one, all these terms will be zero, right? Because then these will be constants. Um, they will be all constants except for the case, of course, where we have a1. So what I can do is I can just drop the sum, right? So then this can be then a1. Right, and yeah, what is the um, derivative then of, let's say if we have something like log x, the derivative of this one would be uh, one over x, right? So in the same way, if I take the partial derivative of this whole term here, uh, this one is, yeah, is a scaling uh, value here, and then this one, the derivative of this part is one over a one. So my derivative of this term is y one over a1. And similarly, I could do the same thing for this part here. For this part, it would be the same thing, except that we have now index 2, because, I mean, if you look at the left-hand side, this would be the same. And what remains is really only the part with the index 2. We can also cancel the sum. So this is how we get this partial derivative. And I should also say, <laughs> this is the last time I will really torture you with this one, because yeah, in the upcoming lectures, uh, next um, week when we talk about the multilayer perceptron, we don't want to yeah, walk through this every time because it's really just the same concept. So this is really the last time I'm doing it in detail. Later in this course, we, yeah, we will move at a faster pace and omit these types of details because this is, I think, really um, 
good to understand once, but we don't have to do it every time because there are more interesting things to cover, like um, yeah, multi-layer perceptron, uh, finding good learning rates, optimizers, and convolutional networks, and recurrent new networks, and so forth. So yeah, <laughs> so if this is boring, it will be over in five minutes, and then we will move on to more exciting parts. Yeah, now the second part. So this is slightly more yeah involved but also not that complicated so let's yeah look at the partial derivative of the softmax unit a1 with respect to z1 so yeah just spelling it out so this is again our softmax activation so here we are looking at the softmax activation for z z1 and remember that we are summing over all the other units here for normalization so for that we have now a quotient so we have to use the quotient rule so I've added it here for reference so in that way it's easy or I find it easy to think of this as um, fx and this one as gx and then we can yeah, apply this rule here so let me delete this again because otherwise it's too crowded here or maybe it's fine let's say just f and this is g so what we have is g times f prime so essentially bringing this one here and then f prime is this part and then on the left uh, on the right hand side we do f so this part times the derivative of this part g prime and then divided by g squared here all right, so if we look at this, um, now we can simplify certain things, right? So if we look at this, we have here the partial derivative of the uh, exponential term with respect to z1. So this yeah just cancels, right? Because the partial derivative of, or the derivative of e to the power of something is e to the power of something. So this simplifies. Uh, on the right hand side, same as on the previous slide, we have a partial derivative with respect to z1. We have this sum here, but we can cancel the sum because all the other terms will be yeah, zeros because uh, except for z1, we can treat them as constants. So this goes away. So if we cancel this um, sum and we cancel this one, what remains is this, very simple term now. So with that, we can now factorize this because note that we have a e to the power of z1 here and here too so we can bring that outside here so we just move that outside and then if we look at this so we can take the left part so we can um how can i say that so we can take this part without the square this is actually again this is our softmax for easy one Right, so this is what I have written here on the left-hand side. And then what remains on the right-hand side is this term. And now if I divide this term by what I have here in the square brackets, if I divide it by the sum of uh, over E, Z, J, then this one will become one, this one will become one, and this is, has then the division by this um, sum term, right? So which is essentially one minus the activation one. So this is a1, and this will be 1 minus a1. And then if I put them together, I end up with this term. So it's actually not that complicated. We can also do the same thing then for this second term here on the right-hand side. So again, the same concept applies. It's still a quotient. The only difference is now that we have ez1 here and ez2 here, because we are looking at a2. But yeah, we can do the same thing using the quotient rule. So I don't want to or have to walk through this, I think. But um, yeah, notice here that uh, this term will be zero because we are looking at the partial derivative of z1 with respect to, uh, sorry, of the partial derivative of this per term with respect to z1. But since we have ez2 here, this is actually a constant. So this whole thing becomes zero and zero times this one will also still be zero. So this simplifies here a lot. And on the right hand side, because we are looking at um, z1, partial derivative with respect to z1, this one um, simplifies the partial derivative 
simplifies to e z one and we have e z two times e z one. So this way we have this as the second activation and this as the first activation. So in that way we also have a very simple derivative. Yeah, and so lastly the last term is the partial derivative of the net input with respect to one of the weights, w12. And yeah, I think you have seen that many, many times in the context of Adeline and logistic regression, so I don't have to tell you how we get the um, yeah, derivative of x2 in this case. All right, so but now we have all three parts, right? So we have um, this part, this part, and this part, and also the same thing on the right-hand side. So we can actually put all th uh, things together. So this part, let me just show this in different colors. And this part and then the same thing on the right hand side. So we can put them all together. And if you walk through this little thing here I did, you will see that this actually simplifies to a very, very simple learning rule. So if we put everything together, we have a very simple learning rule, which is um, this uh, label for class one minus a one times x two, and this is something you may uh, yeah remember from Adeline log logistic regression. It's exactly the same learning rule, except now. So uh, the difference is in logistic regression. We just wrote it as follows, where we we didn't have an index, right? Because we didn't have multiple units and we didn't have a one-hot encoding. In this case, we have these different units, but except that it's exactly the same learning rule. It's a super simple learning rule. And it is also showing that softmax regression or the softmax activation works very well with the cross entropy loss. Later, uh, we will also take, about, uh, take a look at multilayer perceptrons, and you could actually combine softmax regression, uh, sorry, softmax activation with a mean squared error loss. Uh, it's totally fine to do that, but the derivative will not be so nice that these terms cancel. So this is actually, I think, a very nice combination because if we have uh, such a simple partial derivative term, it's easy to implement in code and it's numerically also more stable compared to yeah, longer um, equations. Yeah, and lastly, we can also write this more compactly using linear algebra. So on the left hand side is what I have showed you on the previous slide. So we can implement this learning rule instead of writing it as a partial derivative with respect to one of the weights, we can write this compactly as the gradient of the loss with respect to the weight. And um, we can write this yeah, as shown here, where, um, yeah, this is a capital W. So this is really with respect to all the weights. And we can write this with the design matrix here, the one hot encoded matrix. So the design matrix is an N times M matrix. Know that we use a transpose though, so it's M times N. And here this one, um, this would be the one hot encoded matrix, which is N times H, where H is our number of class tables. So in this case, H equals two. And A has the same yeah, dimension as Y, so it's also N times H. Um, yeah, why this is true, it's a little bit maybe not so obvious to see. So I recommend maybe sketching this out if this is uh, confusing. But also in practice, how I would implement something like that is uh, I would go in my code, implement this one here with very simple, let's say Python for loops, make sure that it works and then translate the for loops into dot products and matrix multiplications. So this is really more complicated. Also, I find this sometimes really hard to do in practice. And this is also yeah, why I kind of admire people who did research in the 1980s and 1990s before or maybe even the 2000s before there were tools like PyTorch before we could compute these gradients automatically. So it's actually not so easy to do, I mean, to implement this efficiently. So I have actually great respect for everyone who did that by hand back in the day. But yeah, nowadays we do this all automatically. So we will actually um, see that this, what I showed you, actually works if I implement it in code, but then also show you that it gives the same results as yeah, PyTorch's um, Autograd API.